Welcome back to the UQ School of Architecture Architectural Technology Presentations. We will be continuing with this series of presentations focused on acoustics. In this presentation we will concentrate on the key aims of acoustic design and how spatial design, materials and detailing can influence the acoustic performance of a space. We can imagine the task of controlling sound in the same way that we control the integrity of a dam. The aim is to stop the waves spilling over the top as well as making sure we don't have any holes in the dam that lets water through or materials that allow water to seep through, in and around the dam wall. In controlling sound and unwanted noise we first need to identify the source of the sound. From the external environment there are a wide range of sources primarily from human-made sources, from machinery, equipment, people talking, or it could be natural sources from the wind, water, or other living beings. Inside, the sources of noise include people, conversation, noise from building equipment, building services, air conditioning, and the like. It could come from personal entertainment, radios and televisions, and so on but it could also be from sources such as the plumbing, footfall or other mechanical sounds attributed to the building's differential movement. We have spoken before about some of the performance requirements of sound control. In everyday situations during the day there are two primary aims of acoustic design and control. The first being speech privacy. This is where you are having a private conversation and don't want others to listen in. The other aspect of acoustic design is speech intelligibility. These two requirements are not necessarily contingent on one another. You can have speech privacy but not necessarily speech intelligibility. For example if you're in a loud cafe. You can also have speech intelligibility but not necessarily speech privacy. For example if you're in a library it will be easy to hear a conversation but others will most likely be able to hear it as well. Materials and detailing play a major part of good acoustic design. Different materials behave in different ways to block or absorb sound. Materials will have the characteristic to transmit sound, to absorb or to reflect sound back to the source. Returning to the dam wall analogy, to avoid unwanted waves or unwanted sound, the strategy is to plug up the gaps to control unwanted sound we simply need to pay attention to the detail of the space and how the perimeter of the volume is finished. In paying attention to the barriers between spaces it determines what degree of speech privacy and or speech intelligibility is resulting. In this example there are three spaces. The one on the left is bounded on one side by a part height wall. Although the sound waves are interrupted they are still able to flow over the wall and thus not much speech privacy will result. The middle space may seem acoustically private but sound is not controlled across the suspended ceiling which is typically lightweight and with lots of gaps allowing sound waves to travel outside the space to adjoining rooms. The space on the right is sound isolated because the dividing wall runs all the way to the underside of the concrete slab above thereby maintaining a watertight, or in this case, acoustically tight, building envelope. Different materials behave in different ways to block the sound. The density and thickness of the material will determine its acoustic performance. Thicker, denser materials, thicker, denser materials will perform better than thinner, less dense material. An in situ concrete wall will work very well acoustically compared to say a cross laminated timber wall. This does not necessarily mean that all acoustically isolated rooms need to be made of heavy material. Dense materials such as multiple layers of plasterboard and thick laminated glass also have good acoustic properties but are not as heavy as concrete. Composite constructions are generally used to create acoustically rated walls however attention to detail is required to prevent leakage of sound through the gaps in the assembly. Sometimes if the pressure waves from the sound source are particularly strong, thinner materials can often vibrate in resonance with the pressure wave, in effect 
perpetuating and in some cases amplifying the sound. Thinking back to the dam wall analogy, flanking sound is where sound waves leak around a material and propagate around the edges to the other side. The characteristic of the sound and the materials play a large part in how flanking sound occurs, but essentially it is the details and the integrity of the perimeter of the volume that should be paid most attention in acoustically isolated spaces. Everyday occurrences of flanking sound occur at the weak points of the room perimeter, which is usually the door or window. Gaps around the door are like holes in the dam and sound can escape. The choice of door in acoustically sensitive, in acoustically sensitive rooms is critical. Automatic sliding doors, for example, cannot provide an acoustic seal. Frameless hinged glass doors are almost as bad. Proper fully framed doors with acoustic seals around the sides, top and bottom is what is needed for meeting rooms in any space where acoustic isolation and speech privacy is critical. When considering the integrity of the volume perimeter in an acoustically sensitive room, we must also consider how noise can escape through the join between service penetrations that enter that room. We need to pay attention to any potential noise leakage through the ducts and service penetrations and, if problematic, we need to work with the services engineers to, vo to devise an appropriate noise baffle. In some instances, the performance of a room is not just to isolate noise, but to tune the quality of the sound in that room. We may need to work with the geometry of the room to ensure that the way sound bounces around the walls is properly understood so as to avoid unwanted echoes or delayed responses of sound in different parts of the room. Though we would be familiar with this in concert halls and the like, it is also common in the design of larger meeting rooms and teaching spaces, for example. In order to shape the sound of a room, we can tune its performance through strategies and materials that absorb sound and others that will reflect sound. In acoustically designed rooms, the assumption is that all unwanted sound is blocked from entering in the first instance. The source of sound from inside the room needs to be shaped using the combination of soft absorbing materials and hard reflecting materials so that the delays and echoes in the room are properly managed. The presence of people in the room will also make a significant impact to the performance of a room, with a concert hall potentially sounding different on a full house compared to that when the room is only partially occupied. The shape, volume and finishing materials are combined in a careful balance to make sure that the room is properly tuned. In these instances, the use of a specialist acoustic engineer is vital to understand and test the performance of a space. In extreme cases, such as the wall of this recording studio, the tune of the room must be as such that the room is almost mute. The use of diffusion and absorption can neutralise the effect of sound in the space, almost to the point where the sense of the room volume perceived orally is non-existent. For an architect, awareness of the issues and strategies that can be employed will ensure that you know when acoustics is important and when to employ a specialist, and then being able to understand the principles at play when interacting with specialist consultants in the field. Be sure to check in with the other presentations in this series for more advice and information. Thanks for listening.